This man is engaged in an act of worship. He believes that his God dwells within the flames. This group of worshippers find their spiritual fulfillment through the medium of stone. They believe that divinity exists within the stone idol. Both the fire and the stone worshippers are examples of the numerous sects that exist within the Hindu religion. They all believe in a simple but absolute divine energy called Brahma. This can manifest itself in a substance or in a being. The Hindu religion is the world's third largest with more than 837 million followers. Older than Christianity, older than Islam, it is indisputably the world's earliest organized religion. Known to its followers as the Eternal Faith, or Snatan Dharma, it is essentially a henotheistic religion, which is one that recognizes a single god, but also recognizes other gods and goddesses as manifestations of the Supreme God. In practice, however, it has evolved over many millennia to the worship of a trinity of supreme gods. Brahma, the creator of the universe, Shiva, the destroyer, and Vishnu, the preserver. In much Hindu worship, it is Vishnu who is thought to be eternal and keeps the balance between good and evil. Whenever that balance is upset, he incarnates on earth to restore harmony. It is believed that there will be ten such incarnations. So far, there have been nine. The tenth is yet to come. It is the eighth incarnation, however, who has been elevated to the highest place in the Hindu pantheon of gods. His name is Krishna. The similarities between the lives of Jesus and that of Krishna have led some academics to speculate that the Gospel's description of the life of Jesus are, in fact, based on the much earlier story of Krishna. Yet another theory is that Krishna could be the father referred to by Jesus in the Gospels. Naturally, many Christians regard this as close to blasphemous. However, there are others who see no such conflict between the two views. Pankaj Angridasa is one of identical twins who originally came from London but now lives in India. They still retain many of their basic Christian beliefs, but are now devout Hare Krishna monks. Sometimes people ask, ask us, how come you come to India? You left your culture, you left your faith, you come from a Christian background, how come you come in and worship in Krishna? I said, no, we haven't changed our religion. We haven't changed our faith specifically. We're still worshiping God. Lord Jesus Christ says, the first command actually is you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And he says that you come to the Father through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So who is Jesus is talking to his disciples at that time? In other words, Jesus is guru for his disciples. In other words, you can only go to God if you need guru. And Jesus is acting as guru because he's saying that uh, I am the son of God. So... Practically everyone is a son of God. Jesus was a very pure son, and he was, we consider him a Shaktavesh avatar. We adore Lord Jesus Christ. He was, he was, his mission was to preach love of God. <laughs> but also he told his, his uh, followers and others, he said, there are many things to know, but you're not able to hear them yet. Bhakti Raghuaswami originally trained to be a Roman Catholic priest. 
but as his belief in God evolved, he decided that Christianity could no longer fulfill his spiritual needs. It was then that he became a devotee of Krishna through the inspirational teachings of Srila Prabhupada. We talked to him at the Krishna Temple of West Virginia. In Christianity we have what is described as the uh, mystery of the Trinity, isn't it? Father, Son and Holy Ghost, which I could not really understand very much when I was younger. When I came to Krishna Consciousness, we can all clearly understand this mysterious trinity of the Son, the Father, Son and Holy Ghost. So the Son of God is actually personalities like George, uh, Lord Jesus. All of us actually are sons of God. He is exemplary in that he became you know, the ideal Son of God. And then the Father, Krishna says, Pitaham, ah, he is the original Father, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo, ah, the source of everything material and spiritual. So Krishna, he is the father actually of Jesus. He is the father of all living entities. And the Holy Ghost is actually Paramatma, Super Soul, uh, who is present in the material world in the hearts of all living entities and actually in every single atom. So in this way, you know, the all per pervasiveness of God is that aspect or feature of what we call Paramatma or Super Soul. Such is his devotion to Krishna that he lost a leg fighting robbers who were trying to steal idols of Krishna from a temple in Mayapur. It is probably the heroic feats of Krishna, coupled with the many miracles he was reputed to have performed, that make Krishna the most popular of all Hindu gods. Among the most celebrated of his miracles are the parting of the rivers at his birth that allowed his father to flee with him to safety from their persecutors, and his miraculous intervention to save the honor of Draupadi, the wife of the Pandava kings. Perhaps the greatest feat of all was the annihilation of the vastly superior Kaurava army by the small Pandava army. The result of this, according to the legend, was to save the world from the forces of evil. This and many other of Krishna's heroic exploits are chronicled in the epic poem, the Mahabharat. Krishna undoubtedly is the most popular of the Hindu gods and the one closest to the heart of the people. His appeal to ordinary men and women everywhere is perhaps best summed up by Kamala Kumari Maishak, a classical Indian dancer who comes from Florida. Just recently, it has occurred to me how powerful the, our relationship with Krishna is. Because regardless of what we go through, regardless of how many times we forget Him, how many times we stray from our path, He's always there with open arms, ready to let us back. And that's why I feel my relationship with Krishna is like the deepest friendship and it's not in any way material. Like in some ways, a friend might leave us for another friend or forget about us or forget to call us or something. But I feel that Krishna is always there. No matter, no matter what you've been through, He's always there just calling out, come back. And He has open arms just ready, ready to accept us. And all we have to do is turn to Him. And it's such a simple thing to just be able to tell Him, Krishna, I'm here. In appearance, it was said he was dark and extremely handsome. His name literally means the black one. And black has underlying connotations with mysteriousness in Sanskrit. He remains to this day shrouded in mystery. An enigma, perhaps a human being, perhaps a God incarnate. Whatever the truth, it is an undoubted fact that he has abided in the hearts of millions for over three millennia. The noted writer Swami Hershananda said of Krishna, If a person can affect such a profound impact on the Hindu race, affecting its psyche, its ethos, and all aspects of its life for centuries, then he is no less than God. That is a view that is held by many devotees and converts worldwide. Nathaniel Clark, now known as Sikhi Mahiti Dasa, 
A disciple of Srila Prabhupada, the founder of the Hare Krishna movement, had this to say. I uh, was born in America in 1955. 